Well, who'd have thought it? It's a year since lockdown was first declared. A whole year, but we're still here, you and I. I am Bishop Peter Fox. I'm coming to you from St Edward's Castle, Donington. Looking back on this last year, an awful lot to reflect on. I suppose we've all learned some lessons. I think if I've learned anything at all, it's just to be a little bit more grateful for all kinds of ordinary things, ordinary things and ordinary people, uh, like the ordinary people who work with the NHS and the ordinary people who deliver my post and look after my emptying my bins and, and uh, serving me in shops, people who've made the whole thing bearable and it would have been hell on wheels without them, ordinary people made me very grateful for my family. I mean, even when I can't be with them, my children, grandchildren, talk to us most days on through video calls. And um, if you're going to be under house arrest with just one person for any length of time, you could hardly be more fortunate than having Angie as that person. So I've been under orders to stay home with my Angie for the best part of the last year. Not all bad by any means, not for us. We've been very fortunate. We've had some real blessings out of the time. We've done things like, I mean, for instance, I've actually made contact with a lot of friends I haven't seen for years and years. And then, you know, suddenly through computer and telephone and all the rest of it, and we've got in touch. At the very time when we can't actually meet up with each other, we've been able to meet by phone or computer. And we've been much more fortunate than many. I mean, after all, in my particular case, I'm fortunate that my pension is safe, my home is safe. I don't have to worry about my, my work. And I know for many of you, it's been much harder. It makes you count your blessings. And that takes me back in my thoughts to Papua New Guinea. Angie and I were there in, in Papua New Guinea in the early 80s. We were, we were starting a parish called Gerahu on the edge of Port Moresby, brand new parish, St Mary's, Gerahu. And then we were back in the early 2000s when I was Bishop of Port Moresby for a short time. And uh, Papua New Guinea was another one of those situations that made you count your blessings, made you realise how fortunate you were. In some ways, Papua New Guinea has a lot to teach us. Uh, the attitude of the people, their, their positive uh, approach to life. They're, they're always looking for the for the bright side of any situation. And they, they need to, because they have a lot of problems to face. But if you're a Papua New Guinea person, uh, you always have home, you always have people you can go back to. Family is the biggest strength for Papua New Guinea. So you should never go hungry, and you should never go without a safe place to rest at night because around you are your family. Every Papua New Guinean has the right to a piece of land in their village where they can grow their own food, and perhaps build a home for themselves out of the bush materials which are all around them in the jungle. So in lots of ways you would look at Papua New Guinea and think they're very fortunate people. There are no fatherless children in Papua New Guinea because every uncle is your father. There are no motherless children in Papua New Guinea for every auntie is your mother. You always have family. And while you have family, you need never go hungry or homeless. But going back to Papua New Guinea, when I went back as, as a bishop, I learned things that I hadn't understood before. I mean, one of the things I learned, for instance, was I learned to understand and appreciate what poverty actually is, what it actually means to be poor. You see, I'd always imagined, and I suppose this would be common, I always thought that not having any money was the thing that made you poor. In fact, I'd, I'd probably imagined that I was fairly poor myself because I never have any money. But I was wrong about that. I've never really been poor, although I've never had any money. 
because the real difference between a rich man and a poor man is choice. You see, in Papua New Guinea, for all their wealthy in family, in, in the support of family, the friendship and companionship of family, in other ways, that many of the people are very poor because they have no choices. A man will grow up in a remote situation in Papua New Guinea and never have any pos prospect, any possibility of a, a formal education, learning to read and, and to write, for instance, and will know that there is no prospect for their children to get an education either. You can watch your family get sick and know that you have no access whatsoever to any kind of medical care unless you're very fortunate and you happen to be one of the people who lives close to the city. Most people out in the remote areas of Papua New Guinea will watch their children grow sick and die and be able to do very little about it. They have no choices. They have no freedom of choice. And that's the thing that makes the difference. Many of us, certainly some of us in Papua New Guinea, missionaries, for instance, missionaries and, and nuns and monks, uh, there may be many people who accept poverty as a, as a voluntary thing, who take on poverty in order to be able to serve God and people better. But that isn't the same as that real, branching, desperate poverty, which is the fate of many people. To have no freedom to choose any other life than the life you've got. I may have been without money for most of my life, but I've always had a parachute. I could always jump if I needed to. I could always move to a different situation. I could always get the medical care for my children that they needed, the education that they needed. I never had any money, but I've never really been poor. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to be. So at a time like lockdown, we could think a lot about how we've been blessed and how fortunate we've been. But we should also reflect on all those people who have not been so fortunate as we are and who live every day with poverty, with a lack of freedom to choose anything but what they're stuck with. Well, it's going to be a little while now. We're going to take a, a short break. And uh, I'll be back with you, I hope, in May, probably around about the 27th of May, just after Pentecost. So I hope you'll come back and join me then. And in the meanwhile, uh, you can always look at some of our old Thought for the Days, on, or Thoughts for the whatever it is, Thoughts for the Day, on, uh, on either YouTube or you can look back through Facebook. But meanwhile, it's been, it's been wonderful having your company. And I'll see you, I hope, in May. God bless.